I think Shalom Malak Shalom Yasharala Before we go into this lesson We give our honor, all glory and all praises to Yahweh So Kal Halalia Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rakakwadash We give that word honor to the apostles and prophets and elders of James Khan But to us great millstone for the bring forth the hundred percent truth that have been currently edified under Shalom to the elect and tabernacle of David and I'm a brother Tazara Kazak coming to you with this lesson now I realize many it, it doesn't make sense casting your pearls onto swine dealing with the heathens because there are many people which we try to make sure that, that they get it but many are actually heathens that they may look like the children of Israel because you have people that may you tell them the truth and the question they, the question ask and these things happen before and so on, so on, so on is the case. And um, um, the Heavenly Father come to save all, no matter how much you try to explain to them, they can't get it. Even going on to say what um, the captivity that happened back then with the children of Israel and the ones that happened um, via transatlantic slave trade is not the same. <sighs> and where, where's the prophecy for that? And it's a bunch of BS that you hear in these things. And when you explain to them, they refuse to acknowledge this truth. They refuse to acknowledge that you just corrected them. To the point now where they begin to what, scuff. They begin to say things. And they're not going to listen to what you had to say. You know, even though you already explained to them. You know. So let us get a simple understanding. The, the Abina which uh, the children of Israel were only the ones that were promised to be saved. And they are only the ones that are going to be saved. There's no way the heathens could be saved. There's no way the heathen nation can be heathen nations could be saved under Yahabashim Yahushai if we are going to be saved by them. I've brought this information way too many times. So this is going to be very short and sweet. Just to just to put it out there because you're, you're saying well what 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 in the scriptures mention that we were going to going to go back into captivity. Let's go into get some precept about one or two, two or three, just to be just to answer that. I will go as I want to deal mainly as to the kingdom, the 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 heathen nation is going to be put down, and the heavenly Father is going to save us, which is plain precepts, which we done way too many times, but I just going to put this out here for those who wonder. You can't scoff and mock at the truth at the end of the day, right? So let's go into it. let's go into uh, Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight and verses. We we'll go out, I think it's 56 or 57, 46 and 47. And from there, we'll go up into the points that we want to get, right? Just to be on the safe side. It says, 46 and 47. Ah, 45 and 46. So like, yeah. It says, right. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verses 45. It says, moreover, all these curses, right, which you see from Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15 come to 64. All more, uh, moreover, the book of Deuteronomy to be exact, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of Yahweh, thy power, to keep his commandments and his statutes and which, which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for sign and for a wonder upon thy seed forever. Now, with that being said, let's keep going. It says, Because thou served not Yahweh thy power with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. And here it says, eh? Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies which Yahweh shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy necks until he be destroyed now what or who what race of people as you like to claim race instead of nation what race of people that happened to i could make it plainly the negroes latinos and Native Americans. This is who it happened to via the 14th century to what the, the, the 19th century. 14th about the eight, the 18th basically, basically but you know there's there was trickles in the 19th century era, more or less murders rather than slavery, right? 
So this, this only, these only fit what? One group of people. As scripture says what? We will be scattered among all nations. Like in a precept. And the Hawa shall scatter thee among all people. From one end of the earth even unto the other. There thou shalt serve other powers. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Even wood and stone. Which when you understand that precept. During the transatlantic slave trade. What were they pushing on us? Christianity. The wooden cross with the pagan man on it. This history goes with the scriptures. So for you to come and say, hey, well, I don't see, and so and so, and the curses, the curses, you're operating as though the curses already come to an end. If that was the case, us Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans would have had our own source of foods, our own land to do so, without the enemy trying to destroy us, or as well as water source, without they trying to pollute and poison it. But guess what? We still have to pay water bill, light bill, VAT and tax off of what we buy for food, like, are you crazy or are you stupid at this point in time? I don't understand all the pedants, you know? but oh gosh, at least use your brain sometimes, now. Nah. Does it really have to be breaking down to that minute detail for you to understand something? Really? Where's your common sense? Let's go into the book of Luke. Luke chapter 21 and, and verses four, um, 24. Let's see what Luke says, New Testament, since I don't want to write on New Testament. Let go. Like for real, where's your common sense? It says what? And they shall what fall to the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. Which we just read what would happen. Starting with what? Babylon the Great. We were sold unto Esau Edom. We were scattered among all nations. This is prophecy that has been fulfilled via the transatlantic slave trade. Who would it be fulfilled to? Only the children of Israel because the curses as well as the blessings were given to the children of Israel. That is in the law. Which we could grab real quick before we continue, right? Because I don't understand you all sometimes. Like, <laughs> it's like speaking to a brick wall boy. Hey, let's continue. It says, These are the statutes and judgments and laws which Yahweh made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Direct to the point. Let's get another precept. Let's go Psalms chapter 147 and verses 19 and 20, which we already know. He showed his words unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation, and for his judgments they have not known them. Praise Yahweh. So his judgments, which is his what? Curses, at this point in time, via the law. Would only be to the children of Israel. Not a fucking heathen nation. That not supposed to be hard to understand though. But anyways. Alright then. So <laughs> let's go back into the Egypt. Um, to, to Psalms. That Egypt. Um, let go in chapter, chapter 28 verse 68. Did you say what? And the and their Hawa shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now we know it's not it, it, Egypt. You can't. You know, I've been on such a. The children of Israel went by went to Egypt by by foot, not through ships. The only place I had to go that, that they went to via ships like that is what America, Babylon the Great, the West to be exact. That Egypt is synonymous to what bondage. I've done this lesson. It is. You could go on my page and look up Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. It's there. This isn't even a, this, it's right there. The whole breakdown is there. It says, by the by by the way, whereof 
I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. It says, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmaid and bond women and, and bond men and bond and bond women, and no man shall buy you. What does that buy mean? No man shall redeem you, because the redeemer is Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. The only man to redeem you out of this whole um, this system, this queendom full of these damn wicked people trying to keep you on a low and destroy you is Yahweh Shai HaMashiach prophecy being fulfilled spoken in Isaiah chapter 6 and verses 9 9 and 6 are like here 9 and 6 are like here as well as 2 verses 2 there's more precepts there's more information about, about the prophecy becoming coming to pass you all cannot deny it you all cannot dispute it where you cannot refute it stop whining the scene Stop why in the scene at this point. And the heathen nations, which we read, let's go back into um Luke. Right? Like back into Luke. We 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 know the whole thing, right? Like back into Luke. One time it says, And they shall fall but by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive in all into all heathen and unto all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down, which is our land. Of the Gentiles. So who was going to be dwelling on the land today? The Gentiles. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Which we see is coming to an end. Because what would happen? They are going to crash. They are going to fall. The heavenly Ahabah is going to put them down. They are going to be put down. Let's get some precepts to that. Let's go into what? Um, Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44. 42, so that, wait, let me see. Yeah, verse 44, it says, in, in, in the days of these kings shall the Yahweh of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, which is what the tabernacle of David coming back in full force and was going to be dug back on this earth forever. Meaning, the children of Yasharala via the ranking system is going to be in the rulership of the earth once and for all and it's never going to change. Let's continue. It says, and the kingdom and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. You see, no other nation is going to be in any rulership in the kingdom. It says, um, no dwell, but it says, but it shall break in pieces and consume all of these kingdoms. That is the point. And it shall stand forever. That is the kingdom that is going to come back and is going to stand forever. Whether you like it or not. You understand? Let me go a precept. Pause a little far precept. I'll read this. I'll read this one and we'll go, I want to go into the next precept. So let me read this first and go to the next precept. And it says, For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron via going back into what? The um the statue, right? You're seeing that the statue. So let's go back. The what? The iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great power had made had made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. It says, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. So we're seeing that we are in what time? The time where the kingdoms are going to be broken. And one kingdom is going to rise up in rulership. So we understand that we are going to be the only rulers on the earth when that happens. And all the other heathen queendoms will become nothing. There's nothing I could do about it. You'll become like nothing. Let's get a precept to that one time. You could get it all and new. I love the new one because the new one is Revelation, which which are a precept they can't ignore. You can't say, well, even so. Nope. It said it. You can't change it, heathens. Let's continue. It says, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen. 
and will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them and the horses and their riders shall come down every one by the sword of his brother you see straight to the point straight to the point their kingdom must come to an end in order for us to be saved and I always go into this. The kingdom must come to an end in order for us to be saved. That's why they have to be put down. They have to go in captivity. Yahweh is coming for one thing. Of course, not one thing, but one major thing. To bring them to nothing. In our scripture here, Revelation chapter 19 verses 11. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire and his head were many crowns and he that sat, he had name written he had a name written Salakia, that no man knew but but him see himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name was called Word of Power. Because why? His vesture was dipped in blood. What blood? Eden's blood. He saw Edom to be at the main point. And the armies which were in the heaven followed him upon, upon white horses. Clothed in white linen and, and, and white and clean. And hear it. And out of his mouth... Um, go at a sharp sword with that wit it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the almighty power and he had a, his he had on his vesture and on his ha and his thigh um, in name written king of kings and lord of lords he would be in the proper rulership. Starting with, he coming down to the tabernacle of what? David. Via the ranking system. And then the children of Yasharala. And after their rulership, then would be the heathens. Not in rulership though, in servitude. But Esau Edom is going to be destroyed. So there's no savior for all heathen nations. Only the children of Yasharala. Via the elect at this point in time. You can't get it. Go fuck yourself. I don't care. Yeah, I was taught way too many times. And you're still scuffing and thinking and thinking. We, we just see all you all the time. Like, at this present point in time, it doesn't make any sense. If, if somebody's being sincere, no problem. You can tell by the spirit. But you constantly want to scuff and, and you, 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 you're posing your questions in a way to, to, to be crafty and to combat, try to combat scriptures with scriptures. That is not how the scriptures work, sir. That when you go into the book of Luke, which agrees with everything, what it says, again, we went into this already, we're going to go into it again. Imagine that. Scripture says what? Blessed be Yahweh, power of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Who is his, his people? Who is his people? Let's get a precept to that before we continue. We have done this many times, but we have to do it again. It says what? This is our power, and there shall none other be accounted of in comparison of him. For he had found out all the ways of knowledge and had given to given it unto him, given, given it unto Jacob, his servant. I'll move this slack. And to Israel, his beloved, that is his people. His peculiar treasure, his holy, that is his people. Children of Yasharala, prince of power. The Israelites, that is his people. Going back into Luke chapter 1 and verses what? 68. Let's read it again. Blessed be Yahweh of power of Israel, for he had visited and redeemed his people and had raised up the horn of salvation 
for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which he had been since the world begin, began, Salakia, that which should be saved from our enemies, who is coming to do? That we should be saved from our enemies, who are the enemies to Yahweh Hashem Roshai, the ultimate one, Esau Edom, and the other heathen nations that were against us, that plot with the with the um the wicked against us with our adversary. So they are also our adversary because why they entertain it. So let's read it again. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Let's continue. It says to perform the mercies promised to our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to remember his holy covenant. Am I right? The oath which he sware to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Point proven straight to the point. Straight to the point. And here it continues saying, And thou shalt be called, let me see, let me show you. And thou shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou, hast, thou shalt go before the face of Yahweh to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Now we understand who that is for. Why, why, why will you think you will get this in, in it? Acts chapter 5, which we close enough with, and verse 13 to the 1, straight to the point. It says what? The, and the, the power of our fathers raised up Yahawashai, whom ye slew and hang on a tree. Him had the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. And forgiveness of sins. That is the one that will promise salvation. Put it into Romans chapter 9 and verses 3 and 4. Romans chapter 11 and verses 26. Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 22. Chapter 21. Shit. Boy, just read the scriptures. <laughs> like Isaiah. Um, Ezekiel. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Exodus, Genesis, the um, Shiloh, which was prophesied to be a um, son of man who come in to save his people. Deuteronomy, like, like, go throughout Malachi, go throughout the scriptures. They don't contradict each other. They work in co coexistence with each other, agreeing in one unison, which is the agreements of the worth given by the prophets unto us. By who? Yahweh Shem Yahushai. Stop the nonsense. It's not for you. It's not for you. That is it. I hope it was edifying. I hope it was clear as day. But if y'all are here, be not hidden, you be not hidden. If it's not hidden, it's not hidden. If it's hidden by, by natural, by bloodline, hard locks. It's not for everybody. You can't add yourself in. You can't use softism and use... Um, um, sly, um, snake-like, slanderous ways, serpent-like ways, you understand? Crafty ways to come into this truth. You will be put down whether you like it or not. So, Shalom Yashorala Kal Halalyam Yahweh Bahasham Yahweshai Bahasham Rekakwadash Give double honors to the apostles and prophets and elders of James Khan, but I'm not as great millstone for the bring forth the hundred percent truth that I've been currently edified under. Shalom to the elect and the tabernacle of David and my brother Tazariah Kazak. Saying to you, Shalom, on to the next one.